This is the Synthesis Technology E520 Hyperion Processor. It's a Euromac format effects unit featuring a variety of interesting new frequency and time domain based effects, as well as some nice updates on the classic delay, chorus, phaser, and flanger effects. This video is intended to get new owners up to speed quickly using this module. Since I know you're in a hurry to dive in, I'll start with the most important information first, and then we'll dive deeper into what this module can do. I am using a pre-release version of the firmware for this video, but the version 1 firmware that the E520 will ship with will behave exactly the same. Let's start with an overview of the front panel. These are your main parameter controls, and these are the control voltage inputs that add to their settings. These are the attenuators for those CVs. A set of four buttons also toggle through various settings. Navigation is done with this encoder, which also functions as an execute or confirm button. There's both a front panel tap tempo button as well as an external sync in jack, these also have alternate functions in some of the algorithms. The micro SD card is for software updates, as well as for saving audio you may capture in the looper algorithm. You can also use a card to save and restore the entire state of the module. The E520 does not come with a card, and you don't need one to operate the module. Here are your audio connections. The E520 is a stereo unit. If you have just a mono source, the left input is normalized to the right side as well. There's a preference to set whether the E520 uses modular or line levels, which I'll show you later. Note that the E520 does clip with modular levels over plus or minus 6 volts, so keep an eye on both the input and output meters, and be prepared to attenuate your input. The first red pixel indicates you're getting close to clipping, the last red pixel indicates that you are clipping, it's time to turn down. With nothing plugged in, you will see one or two of these pixels flicker, it's only a couple millivolts of noise, nothing to worry about, however if you have a noisy power supply, you will see more of these pixels flickering, even with no sound. You might have noticed this auxiliary output jack. A few algorithms use it to send out internal parameters to control other modules. You can also set a preference to send one of the E520's four internal LFOs to this output. We'll get to that later as well. Now let's get down to changing algorithms and editing the parameters. The E520 has a fairly shallow menu, so you don't have to worry about getting lost in endless pages. This top line lets you know what pages are available from where you are. The highlighted item is the page you will go to when you press the encoder. Right now, we want to explore the different algorithms. So first, I rotate the encoder to make sure that algo is highlighted, not page 2 or 3, not top, but algo. Then I press the encoder to bring up a menu of different algorithms. I select which one I want, such as maybe Spectral Crusher, then press the encoder to accept it. If I want to change it again, I make sure my cursor is on algo, press the encoder, choose a different algorithm, press the encoder again, and now that new algorithm has been loaded. Then let's go to one of the classic things, such as a diffusion flanger. Now it's easy to forget to set the cursor where you want it to be. For example, if I was over on top and I press the encoder, I'm in an entirely different menu. Don't panic. You can press main to get back, or if you accidentally get on page two or three, scroll the encoder down to exit, press it, and you'll get back to this main screen. Now let's dive in and actually edit an algorithm. I'm going to switch to the algorithm Spectral Delay Plus Pitch, because that's one of my favorites. The four knobs across the top are immediately live. I can go ahead and set the pitch, for example, for the left and right channels with these two corresponding knobs. Maybe shift one down and shift one up. Something a little bit more in tune there. Set the delay times for the left and right side. Buttons along the bottom toggle parameters on and off or scroll through a small list of parameters. For example, I can unquantize left and right pitch shifts, and make them very fine detunes. The 
the fourth button is always a bypass, so you can get back to the original sound. So you hear what it sounds like before you're processing. This row is the wet-dry mix, as well as the feedback amounts. You can go to full wet, or full dry for each channel individually. I tend to start these somewhere around the three quarters mark. You'll notice there's these little sliders on the panel right here that also give an indication of where these values are. And then there's feedback amounts, both negative and positive feedback. And this is where you can really have fun with the algorithms. There's a preference to make sure your feedback does not get out of control, and I'll also talk about that later. But I tend to start with these at zero, just to make sure I can figure out an algorithm to begin with, and then add in feedback later to have fun. When these dots are filled in, that indicates that the knob is at its center position. The E520 has a pretty generous dead zone around the center to make it easy to hit. Note that these controls are always live whenever you switch algorithms, so a good setting for one algorithm may not make sense for another one. For example, I'll switch to another favorite of mine, the chowder delay. There it is. It may not seem to do much initially. That's because you might have to edit some of the parameters, such as the chowder order to reverse some reflections. Change the time division. As you explore these algorithms, it's a good idea to start with a preset so you've got a good known starting point and then deviate from there. Presets specific to an algorithm are on page three. So I'm gonna switch my encoder to put the cursor over to P3, press it. There's always gonna be at least one preset created by Robert Rich for each of the algorithms. The buttons along the bottom here load the first row automatically, or you can scroll through the list and choose one as well. I'll take advantage of the quick load button. And now I have Robert Rich's default for the chowder delay. My cursor is already on exit. I press encoder, and get back to my main display. You'll see the name of the preset here along the top. You'll notice that the color of all of our parameter displays have changed. This shows you that right now it's using preset values that you've loaded and it's not using the front panel values. As soon as you touch the front panel control, it will go back to being a live control and now take over that parameter. For example, we'll go down to whole notes here. Now let's dive a bit deeper. There are control voltage inputs for each of these controls and attenuators for each of those. I happen to have patched some of my controllers on my Mac's keyboard here to some of the CVs here. The control voltage range is plus or minus five volts and that value is added to the current parameter knob position. For example, I've got the mod wheel going to the chop division Really tiny chops there, or back to whole notes. And I've got these controls changing things such as the stutter probability, and also the chopping order to go ahead and reverse some of these. More of a straight ahead delay there. Back up, zero on my CVs. And now we're back to just what the front panel knobs show. You notice there is a tap tempo button, and whenever there is a time division inside one of these algorithms, the tap tempo can take that over. It assumes quarter note taps. It needs to see at least three taps to derive a tempo. And if you stop tapping for five seconds, then it realizes that you have stopped. And we'll average together your taps, and there is a preference for how much jitter to allow in your taps or to know when to change tempo. You can also plug in a quarter note clock to change this. I'll go into sync in here. Since I'm playing eighth notes, it thinks my tempo is 240 beats per minute. If I slow down my sequence, notice that the tempo is also changed here. And now my delays are timed with that tap tempo coming in. Note that that sync in and the tap tempo button do have alternate functions in some of the algorithms. So it's not a good idea to leave this patched in all of the time. You might switch to an algorithm and have strange things happening. So I'll unplug it, in this case, when I want to explore more algorithms. Every parameter also has some page two settings. For the most part, they're consistent across different algorithms. I'll scroll over to where page two is highlighted, press the encoder. The first four always indicate where the main parameters are getting their values from. CV is a combination of these knob controls 
and my external CV inputs through these attenuators. There's also the feedback left and right. In the case of this algorithm, they have special parameter settings, not just feedback. I can change any of those by scrolling to these different values, such as chop division, press encoder to say I want to edit it, and then choose do I want it to happen from CV1, another few of the CV inputs, or also set it to a specific value, or to set it to one of the internal LFOs. I'll go back to CV1 for now. This red dot indicates the E520 is saving your new parameter. Do not turn off power when you see a red dot. Back to our LFOs. Those four LFOs can be accessed in a couple different places. In the top menu, which I'll show you a little bit later on, and also by pressing one of these four buttons. When you press a button, you edit one of the LFOs. Again, you scroll up to whatever parameter you want to change. Set the frequency, such as how long one cycle is. 100 seconds is nice and long. Press to accept your change. Waveform, many different waveforms. You can see there's lots of different options here, including both periodic and random waves. Press to accept. Same with the offset and with the depth of the LFO. When you're done, scroll down to the bottom and press exit. You'll also notice that all of the algorithms have a high pass and low pass filter. I pass on the input to remove some of the low-end rumble that might muddy up a particular sound, and a low-pass filter on the output to maybe remove some of the high frequencies that might be interfering with your main sound. Also, some algorithms have additional page 2 values. In this case, it's things such as how to quantize the pitch. All of these settings are memorized as you switch algorithms, so when you come back, these settings will be as they were. You can also save them in presets, which we'll get to next. I'll exit out of this screen. Now let's say I really like this edit I've made on Robert Rich's original preset that's in here, and I want to save that. Again, I can save presets for the current algorithm on page 3, so I'll scroll across to page 3, click to go into that page, choose a new slot of the 6 to save it in, press the encoder, and then go ahead and name it whatever I want. I'll just go ahead and throw my name in here quick, not to waste too much time. You can have up to 8 characters per preset. Each algorithm has six presets saved that are specific to that algorithm. Once I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and press save, and exit out of the screen, scroll down, and press the encoder again. The second place to save presets is from this top menu. Top menu contains other things such as preferences and settings for the module. With my cursor on top, I'll press the encoder. Main would take me back to where I was. LFOs is another way to access and edit the parameters for each of those four LFOs built in. And exit. And patch is another place to save your presets. I'll select the patch. You can see I already saved one earlier called LFO test. Here you have 24 different presets that will change the algorithm and load all of the parameters, including the page 2 parameters and the LFO parameters, just like the algorithm specific presets. You can load these from this screen. You can also use the right mix control voltage to change these patches externally, say from a sequencer or a control surface. While I'm here, we might as well look at the other prefs, such as whether or not the display is in seconds, or beats per minute. Where there's room, the 520 will display both, but if there's not room, this chooses which one has priority. I'll go back to seconds. Same for a frequency display. You can change how the parameters are displayed. Pi is the normal, but there's a couple different things, such as arc. I'll select that, go down to exit, go back to main, and now you see it has a different display for our parameters. Go back to top, go back to prefs, pull back up to parameter style. It also is a bar graph option. Set that up however you like. I'll go back into prefs. Here's where you have your input and output level settings. They can be line or modular. Line level is plus or minus 3 volts, so you can go ahead and take an external keyboard and patch it directly through the E520 without additional level shifting modules. I'll accept that. Auxiliary output is again whether or not it uses whatever the algorithm says, or can directly output one of the LFOs if you want to control another module from that. Very convenient, it's like getting four free LFOs in your system. The CV patch load we talked about. A very important feedback limiter to make sure that when feedback starts to go in a runaway cycle, that it gets limited rather than starts distorting. You have a few different settings. 
including off if you want. It defaults to soft. And finally, what's called tempo hysteresis. Basically, if you're sending it a tap tempo or tapping the front panel button, where does it say, oh, they're tapping the same tempo, keep that, or, oh, they've changed tempo, let's go off to a different value. And I'll go down and exit. You have the option to save and restore the entire state of this module to the optional micro SD card. The ability to change the colors for all of your display. You can also reset back to the default color preset. An about screen that includes the firmware version, the current values of the knobs and switches, and more. And then finally, Paul Schreiber's cat, Moses. Press one more time to go back to the main screen. Two last things to show you. There is a special algorithm, which is an oscilloscope. I'll go to algorithm, go to the very bottom of the list, press scope. You can set the left and right displays independently to be an oscilloscope display, as well as a tuner, a frequency analyzer, a set of view meters, and something that measures your taps. And go back to change the algorithm, including a very interesting dual mono. We're gonna have two different processing chains or algorithms on the left and right channels individually. And that's the E520 Hyperion processor. I'm gonna leave it to you from there to go explore the various algorithms. You won't get lost in any of their menus, but there's a lot of power, so spend some time and have some fun.